Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you kind of my workflow on how I create uh, different coins uh, or spinning objects in games. If you're designing a game of, of uh, any kind and you want to incorporate coins and you need animations for it uh, and you're not really sure which route to take, um, these are a couple tips that I uh, am providing here just as far as how I create them. There's a bunch of different ways that you can probably figure out how to make coins, but uh, uh, the first thing that you that you first, uh, of course, have to figure out is, well, what do you want your coins to look like? Do you want them to actually look like coins? Do you want them to look like something else? Uh, and of course, you want to sketch that out, design it, uh, and 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 get a good concept in mind. Um, if you want to go with uh, like a generic looking coin. Um, this is kind of a, a good start just because it can get you familiar with how to uh, how something is supposed to look like when it spins and I can kind of show you what I mean here uh, these are examples of coins um, from games that I just pulled from um, from online just from a, a random search and basically what you have here these are all um, 2d representations of a, a 3D spinning coin, okay? And uh, some are more complicated than others, and if you really take a look and study what goes into these, uh, you can really see that it's just basically, and you can tell from this image especially, if you follow this black outline of, of these coin images, it's basically just a sphere that is um, being uh, shrunk from the sides and then elongated again, and it's giving the appearance of a spin, okay? And it's in, you can follow that along in the same way here. If we follow the outline of this sphere and then look at the outline of this one, basically the sphere is just doing this. It's just, um, you're just taking a, a, a round sphere and just doing this, okay? You're just shrinking it and, and stretching it, okay? Uh, and then you're adding this depth to it to make it appear like a coin. Okay. And even here, they've, they've gone and done that, but they've added different uh, more frames to make a, a smoother animation. Okay, Now, let's say you want to do this, and you really don't know where to start. Um, this is kind of more along the lines of, of uh, you, you just want to have a, a coin, and you don't want to spend the money on uh, somebody else's design, or maybe you want a, a very customized look to your coin, and you're not really happy with anything else that, that you're finding online that, that might be for you or you can purchase uh, for your own game. And I'm a big proponent of, you know, do it yourself. You know, d try not to use somebody else's art unless you, um, you really, really have to or, um, you know, you found somebody that's an artist that can, um, you know, join your, your, your game team and, and produce custom art. Because um, it's, uh, it's just more um, more fun that way and it makes your game... Uh, look a lot more professional if the artwork is original. So here I have um, some frames of coins and basically everything from this um, frame here to the center okay, is actually being mirrored on the other side. So really all you have to um, worry about is these frames. Now you can add more frames to make it more smooth but if you want to make a, a pretty generic looking coin spin, um, this is essentially what, what you need. You need um, you know, the following represented frames. And, and again, it's just a sphere that keeps getting um, shrunk from the sides. And then when I get to the, the side, um, I've just kind of made this um, kind of uh, chubby rectangle if you don't, if you will, um, for, for the side, okay? Now, it can get really tricky because, um, and, and again, I'll just show you kind of what, what these are made up uh, as. It's just the same components. I'm just shrinking them and making them fit those, those spheres. Now, say you wanted to add a logo or words or, uh, I mean, whatever have you to, uh, to these coins, you can go very simple and just try and, and mimic that spin as best that you can. Um, and of course, with, with more time, um, you know, you, you can really refine your, your, your design here. Um, 
And what's going to happen is this is just going to be based off of, there you go, okay? So there you have a coin and it's spinning, and then if you wanted to add this, this crown, you would do the same. You just keep adding it to the, to the, the frame there, shrink the coin, uh, shrink the crown rather, keep shrinking it there. And you see, it. I mean, it's going to work, and it's going to be just fine, but maybe you don't have uh, the center point correct, or maybe you don't have... Uh, you know, there's there's going to be some small nuance to what you're doing, and it might not look right. I mean, that could work for a lot of people. Uh, but for me, I want my coins to look really refined, uh, maybe more detailed than this. So what I do is I actually don't make my coin animations in 2D. Um, what I do is I create them in 3D and then post-process them in 3D in 2D and, I, and I'll explain to you what that means. So I'm over here and I've got my 2D image of a crown, okay? And this is just made up of, you know, um, basically I just went and took um, my pen tool and just kind of made a shape. And the important thing about making a shape for, for what I'm about to show you is that you don't want any open curves. Everything needs to be closed. If you're going to have, let's say, um, some sort of a, um, an opening, you know, if you wanted to make this crown into like a face or something and, and you want it to be open, all of these components have to be separated and I'll show you, and I'll show you why. Um, so I'm going to delete that. Let's just use this crown as an example, okay? What I'm going to do is open up Maya. Okay, now you can use Maya, you can use Blender, you can use really whatever you want as long as uh, you are going to be able to open SVG files. Okay, so an SVG is a scalable vector graphic. Okay, and that's important because I'm going to be saving my logo, my icon, as an SVG. Okay, so I'm going to take this crown and I'm going to export it. I don't want the whole artboard, I just want the selection without the background. And we're going to just bump this up a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to export this. Oh, that was a PNG, so sorry. I'm going to export this as a, an SVG. I don't have to worry about that, just selection without background. Okay, export. And I'm going to put it in here as coin crown. Okay. Now I'm going to go into Maya here, and I'm going to create my coin. And a coin is just a cylinder, okay? It's one of the simplest things that you can model, even if you are not comfortable modeling. Most people uh, with a couple tutorials online can figure out how to make a coin. If not, uh, I will go through it just a little bit here. So I'm going to make my coin, okay? I've got my subdivisions here. I don't really like that height, so I'm going to make it a little bit um, shorter. Now, if I'm happy with the way that looks, I'll leave that be. Okay. I'm going to take the face here and the face down here, and I want to create this sort of um, step down into the coin. Okay. Um, this kind of effect, right? So what I'm going to do, and again, there's a variety of different ways that you can do it. I'm going to use the extrude face, um, and I'm going to shrink that down. So I'm going to figure out what the actual walls of my coin need to look like. That looks pretty good there. Okay. And then I'm going to take those faces again, and I'm going to extrude face again. Only this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to the side view, and I'm going to push these faces in. And what that does is it gives that little nice step down appearance. And you can make this as shallow or deep as you'd like. I think that's pretty good for what I want. So right there, you already have the makings for a coin. That looks really, really good. Okay. But we're not finished. We want to have that icon of the crown. So I'm going to go here to this SVG option. And again, this is going to vary based off of whatever program you use. I'm using Maya, so if you're using Maya, you can follow along here. I'm going to import 
and I'm going to open up this crown SVG. Okay, and you can see that it's going to show up right there. I'm going to just center the pivot so it's right there on the crown. And if there's any options as far as you know the you know how how much of an extrusion I want or how many subdivisions I want, uh, something like that. But for the most part, I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now I'm, what I'm going to do is make sure that it matches the rotation at 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going to put this right at, oops, try and center that as best that I can. Okay. I'm just going to place it right in my coin. Now you'll notice it's going all the way through, and that's because I want both sides of the coin to be the same. If you have your coin and one side is different from the other, you're going to want to make sure that you, um, you have your images set up and rotate them accordingly. Uh, you may have to mirror some images just so that it makes sense on the rotation, but pretty much if we look at what we have here, I just want to make that so it's not so proud of the actual coin face. That's pretty good there. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to there you go. So there you have our coin. Okay. But we're not really done yet. I, I don't really want a 3D looking coin. Now you might, and what you can do is look at your materials and make this look like real gold or real copper or whatever material you want. I want this to look as close to, as close to this kind of appearance as I possibly can. Okay, so what I like to do with, with things like that is create a UV map. So basically I have this gradient that I, I have pre-saved and uh, you know you can just kind of make this gradient as you want. Okay. And I'm going to save this gradient as a PNG. And I'm going to save this as coin UV. Okay? And I believe I just need the one, okay? So now I'm going to go here, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to assign a material. And you can really assign whatever it is that you want. I like the Lambert option. I'm going to go over here to this little square here, open a file, and select Coin UV. There you go. So, it's not really finished yet, right? There's still a little bit of work to do, okay? I want the inside of the actual coin face to be slightly darker than the rest, so I'm going to select those faces, and I'm going to assign a new material for them. I'm going to actually assign the same material that what I'm going to do here is in the color balance I'm going to make it just a little bit darker and in the color offset I'm going to choose like a more orangey color and again a lot of this we we can do um, in post-processing and I'll show you what that means too okay so that's that's looking pretty good now we need something on the sides here now you can choose when you're in when you're 3D modeling to actually make ridges for your coin uh, and again you can make this into whatever you want um, but what I really need I don't really need to do that I kinda wanna make this as simple of a shape as possible um, what I do want to do though is make the edge of this crown oops, make the edge of the crown a little bit darker so it stands out and maybe I don't need to go there we go that's not bad 
do the same here. There we go. It's looking pretty good already. So you can almost call that done. Um, but I want to make it look like this has a little bit more interesting side. So what I'm going to do is go back in here to, uh, and again, I'm using Affinity Designer. You could use whatever um, photo program you have, or I mean, it doesn't even have to be that. You can um, take pictures of drawings, uh, however you want to, to create it. I'm going to create a rectangle. And then within the rectangle, I'm going to create these little ridges. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five. It's not exactly precise. We can use this tool here to space horizontally. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to group this all and I'm going to export this. And this is going to be called coin side UV. It's important to name all of your files because it's going to make your life a lot easier in the future, um, especially if you have a lot, a lot of files that you're um, that you're working with. So now I'm going to take just the side, just the side faces here, okay? And again, just rinse and repeat. We're going to add a material, add a Lambert file, coin side. And you'll notice it's not really what we want it to be, so we're going to go here to the UV editor. We're going to take that coin side and see here as I'm rotating oh, there we go so it's just a little bit too small we're going to sh we're going to grow this image so that we can start seeing these ridges here there we go that's not bad so I kind of want to make them similar size to the actual face. I mean, you could act, you could technically just color the faces and that that's okay too. Okay. There we go. Not bad. Okay. Not perfect, but not bad. Okay, it kind of gives you the point, at least. Okay, there's a little bit of a of an issue here, uh, and that really just has to do with the fact that um, I just have to make my my UV continuous. That export again. Now, when I go to that image, it should, there you go, that looks a lot better. Great! So now what? How do I make this look more like this or more like this? Okay, well, first what we want to do, okay, is we don't want to just sit here and render in in a bunch of different positions because what's going to happen is you're going to get a really wonky animation so what you want to do is set up whatever angle it is that you want if it's going to be um, a straight on image if it's going to be kind of you know like this like it's on the ground uh, let's just use that you know kind of as a as a stepping point here. So let's do this. We're going to go here to um, oh, 
to cameras, we're going to create a camera here. So we're going to lock the camera. Now, one thing that, and that prevents me from moving it around by accident, so all I can manipulate is the actual object, okay? Now, if you have an object that you're going to render and you want it in different uh, positions or things like that, one of the best things to do is actually just to create a brand new camera uh, like this, okay? Uh, and that way, this will be your view, okay? So you can actually move this camera around however you'd like, okay? Lock this camera, and now... perspective view. You can see that camera there is locked right on there. I can't move it around. So now I'm free to move around in my perspective view, but I can render just from that camera. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go into camera one. Okay. What I'm going to now do is rotate this. And it's very simple. Depending on how many frames you want, um, you're going to keyframe this. So let's say I want a really smooth animation. I'm going to do 20 frames. Okay. I know that, um, for example, this is going to be frame one. So I press S, it starts recording. And again, that could be different on your system. Okay. Uh, by frame five, I want this to have moved 45 degrees. By frame 10, I want this to move 90 degrees, and so on, okay? And so what, what you're basically doing is you're making it so that you're keyframing, and this system understands that you want this to rotate to that 45, and then from the 45 to the 90, okay? Um, and then the next one at 15 will be 135. Okay. And then at 20, it's going to be 180. Okay. And the reason why you want to do 180 is again, if The reason why you do 180 is if you have something on the other side of the coin that isn't the same as the front, um, you want that to show. And if that's the case too, you may want to add um, further rotation, okay, so that it goes back, okay. But for this one, both sides are the same, so it doesn't really matter, okay. Now we're, what we're going to do is just render these out, okay. Now in in Maya, you do have um, something that is called tune, okay? And you can assign an outline, okay? And that 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 is really cool, um, but I tend to not want to do that because sometimes it still looks like a 3D render, okay? So what I'm going to do is go over here to render current frame. And actually what I forgot to do, I'm, I'm rendering an Arnold, I need to put in some lights so that the render actually reads. Okay, so that's our coin. Okay, now I don't really need all of this negative space here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is basically go into my render settings and just kind of play around with the actual width and height, okay, of what it is that I want to render. Maybe I just want a 100 by 100 frame, okay, so that's 100 by 100, let's do 50 by 50, okay, and so it's a square, but let's say that I want, let's just zoom in here a little bit, and there we go, get to a better
going to have to lower this camera here. Um, and what I'm going to do here is actually cycle through the cameras. There we go. So I'm going to be able to see what, oops, what the camera view is. That looks pretty good. Let's Uh, there we go. That's what I want. Okay. So cycle through. There we go. That's not bad. Okay. So render current frame. Let's make it a little bit larger because it's hard to see. Let's do 100 by 100. And again, I mean, you can you can play with this all you want. I just want to give the the idea here. So, I want a little bit more detail. That's pretty good. Okay. So now I'm going to save this image, and it automatically saves the image as a PNG. Okay, I'm going to go here into my, my folder, and I'm just going to start putting in frames. So, coin one, go to number two, render number two. Two. Okay, and what you're doing is you're basically just creating your frames now. Okay. Now you might be wondering, well, why don't I just draw out these frames? It seems like this is a, a crazy amount of work just to get something to spin around when I could actually just draw it. Uh, if that's the case, then just draw it. Um, I've come to find that um, for a lot of the uh, what I would think are more simple. Um, drawings like a, a rotating coin, for example, there is an amount of precision that uh, sometimes doesn't come across um, when you have uh, some different angles. And again, it's just going to depend on on your artistic level. If you can do it, then go ahead and do it. This is more designed for people that um, you know they they can draw, but they're not really comfortable drawing all of those frames to, to make the match up or they don't know how to set that up. So um, basically again what I'm doing is just going through and I've got 20 frames so I'm just gonna chug along through. Halfway there. Uh, and maybe I'll just stop halfway just to because um, I could probably use since this is a um, a mirror side coin. Uh, I could probably just just use that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into Affinity. Let me create an artboard here. Okay, and now what I get to do is open up. Here's all my coins. So I'm going to sort them by name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. So I've highlighted them all, and now I'm going to do this. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm going to put ten like over here. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is now I get to align them vertically and I'm going to distribute them horizontally. So there you go, that's my coin animation. Okay, looks really similar to what I've got here, but it's still very much 3D rendered. Now you can kind of see that the resolution of these coins is not really that good and that's because of the settings that I have in in Maya obviously you may want to uh, change them um, you know if you want to put something like uh, 2000 by 2000 okay and then when you render it's gonna render a much higher resolution image okay uh, and it's just gonna take a little bit more time which is why um, you know, I use the, the, the smaller resolution, but we can kind of wait here and just kind of see. Uh, now, the reason why it's taking a little bit longer, too, is I'm using an Arnold render. Um, it's, a, it's much higher resolution to begin with, um, but you, you, you kind of get the idea, okay? Um, but the actual workflow is the same. So now I'm going to highlight all of my coins. I'm going to go here to Effect, and I'm going to create an outline, okay? And that's kind of a, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of an okay. Let me make these bigger. There we go. 
So it's not bad. Uh, ultimately, what I probably would do uh, with a higher resolution coin, there we go. Uh, the the reason why you have these jagged edges is because the actual images are more are more jagged. But what we'll, what we'll do is actually, uh, let's go back here to that. Okay, and let's render that, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Render current frame. And we'll just wait for that. Actually, I'll just speed this up so you can see it. Now, the other reason why I really like doing it this way is if you don't just want to have a spinning coin, if you need to have an image of coins stacked up or uh, coins falling in, in, in various um, positions and angles, if you aren't comfortable drawing all of those at once, and even if you are, it's probably going to be a lot easier to duplicate um, a 3D model and change the rotation than it is to sit there and, and draw each angle uh, and make sure that all of the logos and icons look good so um, you know it's just it's just based off of your 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 expertise level and what you're comfortable with um, I'm just gonna put your coin big okay so now I'm gonna go here and I'll just kinda illustrate what I'm talking about here okay uh, so coin big there we go okay there's your there's your higher definition Okay, coin. And so when I go here and I do an outline, it's going to have a smoother outline, right? So uh, say I don't want that color, I want something a little bit more like this. Okay. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay. So now what I would do, okay, is, and again, this is just because I use the regular renderer, I'm going to continue to use a couple more effects here. Um, Maybe I want the brightness. I want it to be a little bit brighter or more contrast, okay? I want that orange to, to really stand out, okay? Or I want to add a sheen to it. Um, you know, maybe I do something like this, okay, where I have a little bit of a, of a shine to it, okay, in certain frames. And you can just kind of play around with it, okay? Um, what I'm then going to do is I, I want this inside ridge to have um, an outline as well, and and this is going to be a little bit more tedious. But this is really what I you know when I say that I, I'm post processing, you don't really need to do this part. It's just this is how I make my coins, and so um, I just kind of want them to all look. I still want them to look like they were they were drawn, or at least have an element of being drawn. There we go. That's that's really good. And so I would just go around and do that for every frame. Okay. Um, now, what do you do from there, right? How do you how do you know that this looks the way that it looks, right? So, uh, one way to see how it works is just use a a, a GIF maker. Okay. Uh, obviously, when you're using different things, um, like Unity or whatever game engine, you could throw it in there too. This is just a very easy way to do it. Okay, just highlight all of your all your frames. Okay. Upload and make a GIF. Now let's speed this up. Just kind of see what we're looking at here. Let's speed this up to 200. That's pretty good, right? 
Not bad, not bad. So you can really just see what you're doing. That's basically it. I mean, there's definitely some adjustments to be made. Um, but that's really the whole idea. Um, there's really not much to it. it and, and the nice thing is, like I said, once you have... Um, once you have this file, okay, um, you can really just, yeah, um, you can do a lot of things with it, okay, um, you can adjust lighting, you can, um, you know, manipulate it however you want, get different angles of it, render it, okay, uh, you know, drawing something like this, though, you you know, a lot, you, a lot of people can do it, and it might come easy to them, um, if it's not, just remember that you're not limited to just doing something in, in 2D, you can always create something by modeling it out, and then process it, um, in, in 2D, um, it, and having a little bit of a hybrid, okay? And that might be what they've done here. Um, I don't think that this is something that someone may have drawn. They may have, I don't know. Um, but those are two different ways that you can do it. You can you can sit there and, and actually draw out every frame, or you can um, do it this way. I find it, that doing it in 3D makes my life a lot easier. I know that things are going to look um, sharp, and they're going to look good, and, and the rotation is going to be precise and when you want something that rotates in a game you don't want uh, frames to look jumpy you don't want to have to go back into an animation and figure out what's going on um, so I hope that's helpful um, if at all it opens up just kind of the imagination of what you can do if you understand your your 2d world and your 3d world and just kinda of how to combine it because it is a really valuable thing to have um, the knowledge to do both. A lot of a lot of clients out there, a lot of customers are going to need sometimes both a 2D illustrator and a 3D modeler. Uh, and if you can master both, then that uh, that makes you so much more of, of an asset to that team. Okay. Um, uh, thanks again. I'm going to try and make some more videos here uh, in the upcoming weeks. I know uh, if you watched my last video on on game creation. Um, I promised a, a, another another part of that, and uh, I hope to get to that uh, as soon as I can. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, just hit me up on Discord or Twitter, um, and uh, and 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 I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you guys for watching.